we're going to talk about inflation and interest rates, and it's a great time uh, to talk about it. It's wonderful and fun if you're doing research on it. Central banks are coping with that, trying to understand what is the best way to respond, uh, uh, increasing interest rates to cope with inflation, at the same time trying not to uh, create a, a slump in production. Inflation is far above target in the U.S. and at levels last seen in the 70s and early 80s. This situation is very risky for the U.S. economy. Uh, it could mean that the Fed loses credibility with respect to its inflation target and its mandate to provide stable prices for the U.S. economy. However, the Fed has reacted. We've raised the policy rate. We've promised to raise the policy rate still further going forward. And we've begun passive balance sheet reduction. And we've also had forward guidance on all of these dimensions. And the forward guidance is already reflected in market pricing, uh, which should be helping us uh, stay ahead of the, uh, the inflation that's been developing in the U.S. economy. I find it very interesting in light of the next slide, which is about inflation expectations, which also in the euro area has, have been uh, revised up, but more at the one year ahead. We are still hovering about 2%. Uh, we also have consumer expectations. We have uh, market-based expectations. They all tend to be clustered still around 2 but kind of pushing above, which is what basically led also the ECB to announce the policy change uh, with a 25 basis points increase already in July, another one announced for September, and by September we will uh, decide, depending on the data, how much this uh, further change will be. In the US, there's a significant amount of excess demand. Uh, if this excess demand is allowed to continue, inflation will continue to accelerate and uh, inflation expectations are going to be unmoored. So uh, the Fed has to move very quickly in restrictive territory uh, to kill this, to nip this in the bud before inflation expectations get, get unmoored. And the problem for Europe is that, as usual, we tend to be a dominated bond market. So even if we don't have the sort of excess demand that we need to curb, we are to some extent polluted uh, by uh, what's going on from the US in terms of market pressure.